Welcome everyone, my name is Anne Lord, Librarian at the AWRI, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to today's webinar. It is my pleasure to welcome today's presenter, Martin Moran, an Adelaide Hills winemaker and experience research officer with SARDI, focusing on grapevine physiology. In this webinar, Martin will discuss the impact of temperature and pruning time and its interaction on wine chemical and sensory attributes. Before I hand over to Martin to get us started, a couple of quick notes on what to expect from those that are new to AWRI webinars. The format for today is a short presentation followed by a Q&A. The webinar is being recorded and will be available to view via the AWRI website. It is important to remember that webinars are interactive and that there are a number of ways to get involved. To ask a question, please type into the question section of your control panel in the bottom right corner of your screen. For those with access to a microphone, there is the option of speaking directly with our presenter by clicking the raise hand button. This is located in the top left section of your control panel. Please feel free to send through questions at any time and once we get to the Q&A, I will get as many questions through to Martin as possible. Finally, if you would like to get involved through Twitter, please use the Twitter handle at the AW, at underscore the AWRI. Okay, that's enough from me now. I'm going to hand over to Martin to tell us more about today's topic. Thank you, Anne, for, uh, for kind the presentation. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm going to run this presentation on the impact of the running time and temperature on one attribute. Um, so, potential issues in compressed vintage impact in one making. So we recently been experienced. We we have high total soluble solu solids that can increase the risk of stack fermentation, and, and and then having an intentional ratio of sugars in red wines. So high alcohol wines has been uh, talk recently. It's an issue in one industry that brings health concern, tax, ta tax risk, and risk of unbalanced finish, and too much hotness masking aromas and flavors. So, and the potential loss of wine typicity uh, that is related to to the um, to the region that that's that's important. So delay pruning to spread maturity and preserve wine attribute that was going to be presented in the Barossa Shiraz. So it's a key that have to be rotational ret basis on on the pruning. So on the viticulture aspect, the spread mat I have to spread maturity that's been proven uh, with the pilot project that we run. Then fits with the current practices, is a cost neutral and it's positive or neutral for yield. So now we're gonna concentrate more if it's a positive or neutral for wine. So how long we can can we prune? So with uh, Paul Petri set up this uh, pilot experiment back in 2011 basically pick five times um, and determine that the latest pruning that we can pick it was too free for and for the leaves. After that it was detrimental for, for the yields. So based on, 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 on this approach we we set up uh, two experiments in the Barrosa Valley. So I just quickly I'm gonna describe these experiments. Um, so it was one in Walton trial, which is a commercial scale, ran for four seasons, and we made one, two season in this trial. So the three pruning dates were done in winter at bad verse and two three leaves, or repeated seasons. 
and we had an experiment in Uriotpa, which was a combination of free pruning dates with two thermal regimes, heated and ambient. So on the right bottom corner, there's a photo of the heated treatment, which is actually an open chamber where we heat the vines. So as I say, wine was made in two seasons, 2014 and 2015 from both trails. Before I move into to wine, uh, this is an example that a spread of maturity that in one year we had a Uriotpa, that's for research station uh, at, at, the, at the ambient temperature. So we had the winter rich uh, reach a uh, maturity of, of total solid solids at 14 moment, about 16 days before uh, two free leaps. On other words, was, um, harvest was delayed by 16 days on the latest pruning, which was two free leaps. Um, this is a photo taken in Walton Vineyard, and there's a nice contrast with the winter pruning on the left, where you can observe probably shoots about 50, uh, sorry, about 30 centimeters um, EL15 for um, phenology scale. And on the right, you can see a bad verse pruning, which just starting to, to grow. So the one making, we follow a protocol. I'm not going to go through all the protocol, but there were about 10 liters 10 liters demi jones per repetition of, of the field. Um, did a malolactic fermentation, the wines were settled, uh, and after three months was a wine sensory and chemical analysis done to, to, the, to the wines for each vintage. So that's again in 2015 in Walton Vineyard. Uh, in the 23rd of February, winter already was harvested, but I had a chance to, to, to take the photo and compare uh, the shriveling effect on the winter um, where we achieved some delaying effects by delaying uh, pruning in two free leaves, the, the bunch is still looking healthy and, and, and juicy. So we're going to concentrate now on the Walton experiment, which was in a large, large commercial linear. So we ran a we made wines in 2014 and 2015. Um, just just look at the dates of picking here. They were quite different between vintages. So 14 was actually delayed by, by rain events. Um, we ended up picking in March, which is unusual for Barroso Valley to pick that late. And then the contrast in 2015 was actually very warm, and that's when we go back, that's where we got this shriveling effect and, and rapid, rapid ripening. So it was about a week of difference that we can delay the harvest. And that's just to show that the, the wine have similar alcohol, though we have to do, did, we did some dilutions for the second vintage. Um, and, <clears throat> and we have some some issues with the uh, residuals on the winter, actually, because so true. Anyway, I move to the next slide um, from previous uh, experiments. We, we, we noticed the elevated temperature of the couple of oceanics and sugars by delaying color development in a brick scale. So on the, if you look the graph on the left, in a brick scale, uh, when, when we had heated treatments, that was in the past experiment. The anthocyanin development got shifted when it was heated to the right. So basically, <coughs> the, the key was the onset of development of, of anthocyanin it was being shifted by temperature. So when we run this, the pruning <coughs> treatment, uh, late pruning treatment, we realized they actually, the late pruning actually reversed its effect. So if you look on the graph on the right, it looked like by delaying on two free leaves, the onset starts to develop earlier on, on anthocyanin concentration. So it's 
interesting finding that they put an improvement of cyanin to sugar ratio on the berries. So when <clears throat> we find it look more into the wine, when we look at the wine phenolics for Walton, uh, it was consistent the, in both vintages, 2014 and 15, that increase of, of anthocyanins. So on this graph, <clears throat> we're showing um, that P, 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 PT means uh, pruning time, the V is vintage, um, and the interaction between pruning time and vintage. So the, <clears throat> they were all significant for the two vintages. Um, <clears throat> so increased anthocyanins, also increased the tannins, and they pruning both vintages, and the total phenolics. So they pruning increased anthocyanins to sugar rich in berries, and this was translating to a higher anthocyanin content in the wines. Um, now we're going to try to put all the variables that we measure on the wine color parameters, the chemicals, on the Walton trial. So we have the two integers, 14 and 15. And this is the PCI, but before, in, before putting the variables inside there, I just want to <clears throat> make clear that the both vintage, the distribution on the space on this graph, they mean very similar. So when we look at the chemical variables, which in this PCA, uh, we see the anthocyanins moving towards the, the late pruning, pigmented tannin, the chemical edge as well. And that was for 2014. And 2015, we had the same effect. So we're looking at two free leaves again, having um, more tannins, more phenolics, the color density increase and again the total anthocyanins. And then moving into, um, into the sensory, we, we, we saw a shift on fruit flavor on the 2014. So shifted from winter towards the late pruning, had, the, had more the dark fruit, red fruit, ripe fruit on the palate. Uh, also, the this, this showing the sensory people, people could detect a more body and, and the visual more opacity on the one. So it, it correlates quite well with the, with the chemical uh, analysis, the, the sensory, which is it's good to see. And then again, moving the, for the 15 vintage in Walton, um, we have that com very compressed vintage, uh, winter actually shriveled shriveled more than the other ones and and there were some unintentional sugars left from winter so the panel detected this as a taste sweet confectionary vanilla probably all these sweet flavors were enhanced by by, by some residual sugars and on the other hand <coughs> to fill the dry ones could pepper on one and in quality was better on, on, on late pruning, though have some vegetal and savory and mint, but we maybe it's because they, they were drier as well. Moving into the the air experiment, we, we actually have the, the top the open top chambers to, to heat the vines. So we can study temperature and, and late pruning interactions. On, on this case. So we may again two vintages, 14 and 15 the wines. So this is a graph of um, Neuripa research station which shows the um, what is in the impact of the late pruning when it's interacting with temperature. So with, with the red we're showing the heated treatments and in the x-axis we, we have winter but less than two free leaves. So we, we, we found that temperature actually still having that, that uh, great impact on decoupling the anthocyanin. So when we measure anthocyanin, the one's actually that lower. But we found really something interesting here that when we prune at two, three leaves, the, the anthocyanin is actually on, on, on a heated treatment increase. 
So that's that's actually the introduction showing. You see that um, the red, the red cut in the blue line, is where where it's shifted. So that was quite interesting because we know that temperature is decoupling the anthocyanins, but we can see some benefit on on the light pruning one, especially in the two three leaves, by restoring this loss of of color. So again, the color density responded very similar. And then um, I, I, I will run quickly the, um, the Neuriopa reset trial. We have temperature. So the first vintage, what happened? The temperature effect actually increased quite dramatically the yields on the vines. So in some respect, that delay maturity as well. So you, you, can, you can see in this PCA that the, the, the heated treatments regardless of the pruning time, which is winter to free leaves and butters, they were shifted to the left. Um, and this graph, the control or the ambient temperature was shifted to the right. So when we look at the, um, at the chemical analysis, so basically that temperature effect was uh, dominant. Um, we couldn't see a lot of difference on the, on the pruning effect in this vintage because it was over right, but the temperature effect. Anyway, the, the total anthocyanins was higher on ambient temperatures. It wasn't a lot of difference between the prunings, but the color density particularly was uh, higher on butters, and the pigment and tanning was, uh, and the tanning were higher also in the later prunings. So that, that was some interesting impact that was consistent what we found in, in, in the Walton Vineyard. And then when we look, combining the, um, the, the sensory with the, with the, with the chemical, I, I just uh, done this uh, uh, rectangle to, to show that there's a lot of correlations here. So we see total phenolics that increase, the, the color density that increase, especially on the late prunings and ambient temperature here on the right uh, bottom of the graph, so uh, the blue is the sensory that people detected, so body, the time increased on the perception, and that was correlated really well with tiny pigmented tanning and color density in the wines, and also total phenolics on the chemical. So again, moving to the following vintage, where temperature didn't have much of impact on yields, so yields were similar, so it was an increase on, on the yields for the butters pruning. But what I want to focus here is that heated. Now, one of the heated trimming was shifted towards the, the ambient temperature ones. So the heated at two free leaves is moving into regrouping into the, um, with, the, with the ambient temperature groups. So when we look at the chemical, again, we have the tannins increase on, on the not heated ones, the, the total pigment, the total anthocyanin, and the, the total anthocyanin was also moving towards the bad versus pruning. And again, some good correlations with, with the sensory that, <clears throat> that the pe people that detected that were more colored in ones visually and actually, if, if you see that's actually one-to-one -one correlation with color and total anthocyanin when we, we look at the chemical. So just having a um, resume of, of this presentation, late pruning consistently improved uh, anthocyanin and tannin content of wines, increased the map full might feel on, on the body, the color and the tannic intensity. Also increased pigmented tanning. Uh, they are resistant to sulfide bleaching and contributes to the long term st uh, color stability on wines. And partially restore color and the elevated temperature. Thank you very much. Um, now we're moving to questions time.
Thank you, Martin. Just to reiterate, to ask a question, please type into the question section of your control panel in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. For those with access to a microphone, there is an option for speaking directly with our presenter by clicking the raise hand button. This is located in the top left section of your control panel. So I got a, a question here. They say, please define the lighter pruning. Uh, was the pre-pruning occurring, or were the vines left with long canes until the lighter pruning? All right, that's a good question. Um, you actually uh, at the commercial vineyard because uh, running commercially, they actually pre-pruning just before the, the the pruning by hand. At the two spare pruning, um, two watts spare pruning. Um, so yeah, it's better better to leave the canes and then run. You 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 could run the um, the pre pruning a, a few days before. That's fine. But and because that some studies show that that the delay on on the basal bats they're actually set up much earlier than 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 a few weeks before you you move into Batpers, so I don't I don't see any problem by doing it a few days before. I hope so that answers your question. Uh, are this slide available to download? And uh, secondly, can this be implemented with other pruning methods? Yeah, that the the slides, the presentation will be available in the Ari website. Um, Fabiano asked. Um, and secondly, can this be implemented with other pruning methods? Uh, would you, like, would you like to comment about that question again? Because be more specific. Um, but basically, what what we done? We just delayed the pruning. A spare, we're talking about just spare pruning. So basically, by delaying pruning later in the season, the the buds that you normally leave in spare, the one and two uh, two buds. Uh, close to batters, they they are delayed. So the basically, yeah. okay. I, I got another question from Fabiano. For example, with bujot or cane pruning. Well, this is a good question. It, it will be much harder to 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 achieve that because we we are actually focusing on on, on delaying basal basal. But so in a cane in a bujot or cane pruning, you have. Um, you have a uh, but they, they, they won't be delayed I guess but but if you leave it if you prune it close to bad bird you are expecting to have some some delay on, on the on the budget but it won't be as much as as, as the spare pruning uh, Chris I noticed you've got your hand raised I'm just unmuting your microphone if you'd like to ask the question now. Thank you. Just following on from the, the question about the pre-pruning, um, you, you say as long as it's within three to four days of the follow-up hand prune, do you know more about 
because we do tend to sometimes pre-prune several weeks before the, the final prune. The, mm -hmm. what, what, which will have the more impact on a follow up the attributes you've been talking about? Uh, the attributes in respect to the wine, you mean? Yeah. Well, if if you prune if you pre prune earlier, you mean? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, I I read some studies that actually the delay on the bats one and two normally set much earlier than than. Than you know when when you're pruning at bad or, or post bad birds, when you delay in the pruning, if you pre-prune at four four bats or whatever, and then you do by hand closer to, closer to the bad birds, I mean you have to you have to try it, but I think you have a very similar effect on delaying maturity. The the reason we want to prune later is to decompress harvest. That's the main the main reason. Um, and then we're trying to see, well, you know, when, when it's a very compressed harvest and, 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 and it's the grapes are shriveling and the wineries can, can produce all at the same time. So by, by well, our aim, our principal aim was trying to delay that maturity. So you get a chance to pick these grapes and they're not overripe. You know what I mean? That, that was the aim of the product. And then we, we, look, we look further into what's, what's, what's happening to the wines. We found positive, positive things that, you know, it's increasing the color and the tannins and, and things like that. And, and I think the key of that is, uh, is on the onset of development of the, of the color, so which is about Verazón. So by, by delaying Verazón, we, we, we've seen an increase on the ratio between sugar and anthocyanins. So, so the act of pre-pruning of, say, cutting back mm. to about four to six buds will, it has more have, impact on, on delaying, yeah, I, on, or not expect, delaying things than, than the final prune. From, from research, I have read that they, they basically, what they did, they, they, they cut the whole cane close to, uh, uh, close to adverse, and they realized the, and then they culture each bat from one to ten in a cane. They culture that in the lab, and they realized that they they, they respond differently. That delay was already in part earlier in the season. So, okay, but I, I can tell you, I can tell you precisely, you know, exactly when, when is that that delays. Um, is it more a hormonal? Hormones going there as well. They play a role on delaying the butters as well. But if you okay. prune earlier, if, if, yeah, if you pre-prune earlier, you, you, yeah, it will be good to 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 see how how early you can pre-prune without without uh, making them to birth earlier. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Have 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 seen been researched that on the vineyard. Thank you. No, you're welcome. Thank you for the question. Okay, I'm going to read a question from Dutza Schultz. Would you expect the same results with different grape varieties? Well, I, I can guarantee that, but um, I think I think my opinion maybe may have um, different variety will have different impact, perhaps on just give an example that um, um, some of this technique is being used to to improve fruit set on some varieties. They they tend to to have erratic fruit sets some seasons, like for example Merlot. A Merlot, some paper done by Frien, Frien in New Zealand. We actually they they delayed um, pruning in Merlot. They increased quite dramatically the yields because they they 
push, they, they reckon they push forward the, the fruit sets to, to, to a warmer climate. So I, I imagine, yeah, it will, it will have different, different resan, results in different varieties. Um, for instance, if you're doing a Y variety, I, I think you may increase the ratio acidity to sugar to make it a fresher one. I don't know, just an assumption, but it depends. Yeah, depends what variety it is. If it's a white, obviously, you may be looking different things. That, but I think I think uh, as I say before, um, the aim of this was to decompress vintage and to try to preserve rather right, to, to improve the wines. Thank you. I read the next question from Leonard Russell. Uh, was soil temperature recorded or considered? We have measured some soil temperature uh, near Yopa one season when because we have heated panels um, we have we we seen some increase on soil temperature when we heat the vine with the panels but we haven't we haven't measured directly soil temperatures for this project we 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 are more interested in 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 see the if we can delay maturity by by delaying the bad burst so now we we haven't you can consider soil temperature at this stage. Okay, we're we finishing with the presentation and the question time, but I just want to make um, a comment on, on this research. has been probably the first re research that look at, at, at trying to delay maturity uh, with the light pruning, it, because light pruning was used for, for other purposes. So, um, um, and also we look, uh, looking in what it would actually impact on wines. Is, is it pretty much only a new experiment? So it will be a lot of questions. So I, yeah, I guess it will be interesting to 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 see what is the the effect of light pruning on, on different varieties, on different regions as well. For instance, in, in the Allied Hills, I think it might be if it's getting warmer, maybe by by the light pruning in Chardonnay, my my might be interesting to to harvest down in in the cooler part of the year, perhaps, and I make a better quality champagne. That's just a personal comment, but you know, it's it hasn't been researched as much. So, so yeah, just finishing with that. And thank you very much for your participation. Thank you Martin for presenting today and thank you to everyone who attended and took part in today's session. For, t for attendees you will receive a follow-up email with a link to this recording and a link to a survey. The next AWRI webinar is on 25th of August where Adrian Coulter from the AWRI will present on stuck ferments. If you would like to register for this webinar please visit the AWRI website. That's all we have for today. Thank you for attending and I'll look forward to seeing you again at the next AWRI webinar.